The devs just did a stream for the update 1.7 that is coming to the test servers this week, so I thought I would do a quick rundown. But here are the big headlines. There is going to be a reconnect feature, which means you can join matches if you have been disconnected or if your game crashes, you will now be able to rejoin matches. There's also a new three slot long ammo rifle called the Berthier Model 92. Obviously I'm not French, so I hope I am saying that at least somewhat correctly. The devs have also finally added preset loadouts, so you can actually make loadouts and pick them quickly in the menu and hop back into matches much faster that way. There's also three new traits, Vigor, Magpie, and Poison Sense, and I will talk about those as well. There are also some pretty major map changes. I won't go into all of them, but I will show you the screenshots toward the end of the video if you want to take a look at those. So let's hop into the first section that is this reconnect feature. There are two different types of reconnect. There is an in-client 60 second timer reconnect, and then there is a main menu 10 minute timer reconnect. So what that means is if you are playing Hunt and you experience a huge lag spike and you get disconnected temporarily, you have 60 seconds to reestablish a connection or you will get booted to the menu. Your hunter will stay there. They will stay standing wherever you got disconnected from. But after that 60 seconds, you will be booted to the menu. And then there is also the 10 minute reconnect. So if you get booted to the menu after that 60 seconds, if your game crashes, if your internet goes out, you have 10 minutes to get back to the main menu where you will be displayed this prompt and you can choose to either abandon that match, as in let that hunter die, lose all the equipment, you don't get anything, or you can reconnect and you will also get a status of your teammates so you know if they are alive or dead or being burned. Basically, you get to know is it worth even joining the match. It's worth noting when you get disconnected, your teammates can see an icon on your character and your character will crouch automatically. So your teammates will know what's going on and your hunter will at least be a little bit smaller and hard to find. Okay, let's talk about the new gun, the Berthier Model 92. It is a three slot long ammo carbine rifle. It's a little unique. It has a three round capacity with an in block like clip sound. and that complicates its reloading yeah, it's mechanism. Unlike the LaBelle or the Mosin, you can't top off the clip, so you can't just load in one bullet at a time. You have to use these three round clips, but it can also benefit from bullet grubber. So if you need to reload, you can still catch those bullets with that perk and not lose any ammo. It's also worth noting this gun can bring two ammo types, so you can have your basic and your special ammo. And the special ammo available to this one is the Spitzer and Incendiary, so that's pretty cool. Let's talk about the traits. So the first trait is Vigor. While in Dark Sight, it doubles the rate at which health and stamina regenerate. They showed a little clip of this. Basically, it does what it says. While you're in Dark Sight, which makes you a little bit more vulnerable, you double your health and stamina regeneration. That one unlocks at rank 38, and it costs four upgrade points. The next trait is Magpie. Receive a short effect similar to that of either the antidote shot, stamina shot, or regeneration shot when picking up a bounty token. It costs one upgrade point and it unlocks at bloodline rank one. The dev said this one is just for fun. It's not really supposed to be a competitive pick, but it can, you know, turn the tide or whatever. The last of the new traits is Poison Sense. You can see nearby poison hunters while in Dark Sight. So this works kind of like when you are carrying a bounty token, except the hunters you see will be highlighted in white. So with Poison Sense, you can go into Dark Sight and get a general idea of where that poisoned enemy hunter is. It's not as strong as with the bounty token, but it can help you in some select situations. Hunters are visible for the duration they are poisoned, so that's worth noting. They also tweaked two traits, Vigilant and Bladeseer. For Vigilant, they significantly improved the visibility and reliability of all visual effects, and it is now possible to distinguish between different types of traps. So if you have Vigilant and you go into Dark Sight, 
you can see if a trap is a bear trap or a concertina mine, all those different options. With Blade Seer, they significantly improve the visibility and reliability of all visual effects. Basically, it is easier to see your blades. And then we can talk about loadout presets. So by default, you get three for free and you can purchase seven more with blood bonds. In the roster menu, you click this custom button above your primary weapon. And this works exactly as you would expect it to. You can rename each loadout. You can pick which primary and secondary gun is there, all the tools, all the consumables, and you can prioritize using contraband items so you don't even have to spend money. In addition, you also get this red icon if there's something you don't have. For example, if you aren't high enough rank or just don't have enough money to purchase that weapon, you'll have a red icon showing which one it is. Okay, they are also adding four new legendary weapon skins. I'm just gonna put those on the screen and you can look at them and buy them if you want to. So the devs went in and tweaked compounds in each of the maps. In Sal, Lower Sal got a little bit of a facelift. The stores got cleaned up. The saloon looks a little bit better. And in Lost and Delta, they made big changes to Windy Run. So there's less open space and more cover to move around with. And at Wolf's Head Arsenal, they also changed some of the mobility path lines so you can get around a little bit better. And then Stillwater Bayou got some great additions as well. They went in and changed Pitching Crematorium so that ramp isn't as deadly and annoying to go against. They fixed the weird roof situation in Lock Bay Docks. If you've been there, you probably know what they're talking about. And they also added a bridge to Catfish Grove so it's easier to cross that big water barrier. And probably the most significant is the change to Scupper Lake. There is now a much more playable area and less water that you have to just kind of slog through to attack that compound. Anyway, my opinion on the update, I'm really excited about the preset loadouts. I think that'll make things a lot faster. Although I imagine I'll get really frustrated waiting on my friends to customize their pre-made loadouts. The reconnect feature is great. I don't have that problem very often, but that is cool that they finally could implement that. And that makes me wonder, are there other technical limitations they were running to originally that they have now overcome? Maybe a winter map. The map changes are really exciting. I'm glad Scupper is fixed because I hate Scupper. And if anything, I think 1.7 will give players a lot of hope for the future. It seemed like for a while there, it was unsure if Hunt was kind of going to fade away and stop getting support, but they've really outdone themselves with the most recent updates and I am excited for that. So anyway, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. You can ask me about the update or just some general impressions. Anyway, video this Friday. That's it. Bye.